yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fall on YouTube channel. Uh, James, what you got going out here, buddy? <laughs> well, you see, I'm a, a master in my ricer techniques. Yeah. So I got the sticker letters down on the tires. Yep, so yeah. <laughs> figured I, uh, ricer up the dude, old junkyard bit. This is yeah. sick. Cooper brought this idea up, and it was, dude, it's, it's awesome. So we're actually going to cover the entire back of Ruby with stickers, James. A clearly got a head start with, here. Yeah, a lot of people do it. They just, like, wrap it black or, like, carbon fiber. Or yeah. Something. We were wrapping in stickers. Yeah, we, we had so our, we many our, stickers. A lot of good people that help us out along the way, you know? So. Yeah, man. All right, guys, so we have some parts to open today. Texas Speed sent us some new stuff to uh, rebuild the second engine, which is over there, all honed up, ready to roll. And then Johnson lifters, we sent out our lifters to be uh, repaired because they got pretty chewed up in the last engine explosion. So time to open these babies up, and we'll start uh, getting after it. They put Team, team Bartle Skeet on there. <laughs> The good guys are there at Johnson Lifters. Yeah, shout out to the guys at Johnson Lifters. So I don't know if these are the same ones. I think they had to actually replace a lot of them. Yep, Johnson Lifters. Oh, take two. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no way. That's awesome. Take two. All right, so we got our Johnson Lifters for round two here. They got the Cletus logo. These might be the same. I don't know. Got ourselves a fresh set of uh, short travel lifters there. And then in here... We got our, uh, we should have a new cam, uh, some head gaskets, and I don't know. Some other goodies, let's see. Some other goodies, yeah. Look at that cut, like a true pro. All right, let's see what we got in here. Tech speed and performance, as always. You guys know how we roll? Okay. Fresh set of head gaskets. Head gaskets, I think I saw, no, they're just head gaskets. All right, cool. Thanks. What do we got in here? Oh, are these the uh, are rings? The new piston rings, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pop those open. Let's check them out. Oh, we got uh, rod bolts. Yeah, ARP rod bolts. Hell yeah. Okay, so we talked to Texas Speed, and we were like, guys, what do you think about doing rod bolts? They are like, it's a must. It'll hopefully help us keep the rods in the block. That would be a good thing. Yeah. Whoa, man. You're really going to have to give us a rundown on this today, James. Yeah, we got our top rings in there. Yeah. Our second ring, which is a scraper ring, oh, okay. cleans the cylinder oil. And then we got our oiling ring, which pulls the oil up and wow. lubricates the cylinder oil. Yeah. Fancy stuff, man. All right, so we got our rings, the bolts. What do we got in there? Oh, chain, timing chain. Some stickers for the back of Ruby. <laughs> and then our new dumpster fire cam. I think that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. there she is. <laughs> there we go, dumpster fire cam round two. Hopefully this one uh, we don't screw Hashtag up. Hashtag full send. <laughs> Dude, the guys at Texas Speed are freaking Dude, amazing to us. Look what they put on here. Dumpster Fire C6, the sequel. <laughs> no way. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you to the guys at Johnson Lifters and the guys at Texas Speed and Performance always helping us out. And Precision Turbo, I think our turbo gets back today or tomorrow. That thing was in seriously bad condition. Yeah, that's the last so, piece of the puzzle after that. Yeah, we, we actually had to get a whole new center section for it. Yeah, it so. got beat up pretty good. It got beat up pretty bad. And we'll show you guys when that comes in. But for now, we're gonna assemble this engine, even put the heads on it, go as far as putting the whole thing together today. We got some assembly to do, so I got some learning to do. Let's yeah. get to it. All right, let's see what we got in here. Oh yeah. Oh, Leroy's OG old heads, like what are these, two rounds ago? And we oh, need to get our water cleaned. These are the ones that these are your stock castings you had. Those are the sent. ones that came on my LS1, yeah. and we sent them to Tech Speed. They ported them, put bigger valves, put bigger in, valves in, valves, yeah. and hopefully these valve springs are all right. I don't think there was. I think there was maybe three thousand miles these on them. These should be fine yeah. because you've had them sitting like the. This is the best way to leave a head sitting is no load yeah, no, no load or anything. Yeah. Okay, cool. So here's our head. Yeah, they they even put that in the side. Our stock casting heads off of Leroy's original LS1. They're going on Ruby, so the legacy comes back alive. And uh, hopefully we'll get all the way to putting these on today. So once those are done, we gotta put the pistons in, huh? Yeah, you gotta clean the rest of the parts. Yeah, pistons. man, we need them but pistons cleaned up. While the pistons up. are cleaned, we can file fit the rings to each cylinder. Yeah, I'm excited to do that. Here's our box of pistons and rods. They, they'll go in there next to get cleaned up. So before they all go in the hot wash and get cleaned up, James is actually etching in the number, the piston number and rod number so that the bearings match up on the crank. Yeah, obviously that, if you change it, it'd be a little different. Huh? That and the sides of the bottom of the rods, there's this, this side rides against, see how it's got the bevel? Yep. That's the side that rides against the crank. This is the side that, the flat side that, that rides against the other piston. Okay, so we gotta make sure we have it all <clears> right. You mix those up and. Yeah. 
So James is etching it all in so that even if they get cleaned off, we'll still know which number piston goes in which cylinder. Never would have thought of that. Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna try and give you a little bit of a tutorial on how we're doing this, and just kind of show you the way we're doing it. Do not take our word for this. We are not professionals. We are more like just winging it all the time. So we're gonna do this. We may be wrong, so don't follow our directions unless you really, I mean, I guess we'll see how it turns out, but <laughs> I don't wanna lead anybody in the wrong way here. What we've got here is our top ring. So which ring is this gonna be? This that's is our- the, That's the scraper ring. It's the second ring on the piston. Second ring on the piston, yeah. okay. Its job is to scrape the oil out when the piston's going down. Gotcha, and we're gonna do these ones first. Yeah. So what we're doing, guys, we're adjusting the gap that's gonna be on the piston ring when it's on the piston. So the reason, when it's when it's a stock ring, right, the gap is what, like 15? Yeah, it's really high, okay. it's like 17. Usually this was like 17 and the top one's 15, somewhere around okay. those numbers. And we're doing 24, 26. Yeah, 26 so on these. So this one will go 026. So what we did is we put the ring here in the cylinder. James is gonna push it down with this old piston to about the midway down the cylinder there. To there. About, about there. And then we're gonna measure the gap. See that little baby gap right there on the bottom left hand side? That is what we need to make a little bit bigger. So James has one of our feeler gauges. I mean it's it's tight. Let's see what it is. Let's see if it's 16. Yeah it's right at 16 so we so, need to make it. Yeah need to show, open them the, 10, show them on the feeler gauge. 16 thousand. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this ring out, widen it just a little bit so that that feeler gauge right there which is 024 if that one fits in it, then we're good to go. Oh no, wait, we're doing 26 we're doing, on that one. We got 10 and I got 10 and 16 for 26. Okay, so, so we gotta make this fit. When that fits, we're good to go for that ring. We gotta do that on all eight, and then we gotta do the, the top ring, the top ring on all eight, and then uh, then we put them on the pistons and put them in. So the oiling ring, that bottom ring, that doesn't get adjusted. That one just goes in with those two, the upper and lower ring on that, and then we're good. All right, so we're gonna get cracking on this. It's gonna take a little bit. And we're also gonna show you guys how we'll file this gap to make the gap the right size. So James brought in his little Harbor Freight grinder here. Ooh, she, she's a serious little thing. Dude, this she's a ripper. $8.99, use my 20% off coupon <laughs> for the extra dollar ninety cents. Nice, we can even guy. polish them, huh? If you wanna polish your watch while wow. you're at it, go for it. Wow, this thing is powerful, man. I, I see to, you uh, cut off the, man, we, we're gonna have to tie her down. She's out of yeah, control. I'm to put a clamp on this one on this All table. Right. Okay. But um, yeah, I cut this guard off so I could use the whole polishing wheel on this Yeah, side. yeah, I hear yeah. you. All right, well, I'll, I'll hold it still if you wanna get yeah. in there and open her up a little bit. See, we're a test run. See, the, you count the taps for the first one. You're gonna, we're probably gonna do this about five times back and yeah. forth with this first ring, but yep. I count the taps. And so then, then you go back and the next one, you go one less tap. Yeah. And then you check Try it. it. And if it's, if it's tight, then you go one more tap and you're good. Huh. So you push it back to mid cylinder yeah. using a piston because it gives it that flat, you know, make sure the ring sits yeah. in there flat. And then you can see the gap is now yeah, up. It's, now it's a little it's wider. It's now up too. there. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's wider. So you want to stick the feeler gauge in there, see yeah, how we're looking. Test route. Let me see here. Oh, it's close. Still a little too tight though. Yeah, it's probably needs two or three more taps. taps. Yeah, we'll give it a nice solid three tap. Total of seven taps. All right, I'll fire you back up here, brother. Let her eat. All right, that was three. Oh, first one didn't count. I right, was going for four. It was about three and a half. First one they kind of bogged, it bogged a little ripper down too far. <laughs> we might need to put that thing on 18 volts. I like the piston method. Make sure your ring is in there, right? It's a nice, nice little trick. Yeah. Did get some rust on our walls, though. Yeah, well, before final assembly, yeah. we get it re-cleaned. Yeah. All right, let's test it. Test your out. Oh, look at that. Still a little too tight. I mean, it's in there. See that, guys? The feeler gauge is in there. What are you thinking on that? Maybe just a smidge too just, tight? Just one little bog, and it's good. Okay, cool. One last bog. Oh man! <laughs> All right, give her the rip. All right. Oh yeah, like butter. So twenty-six thou on that. Hell yeah! All right, All right. so that ring is done. We got to do 
all eight. We got to keep track of which cylinder has which rings. Then we got to do a second ring, the top one, and then uh, we're done. So Whew. how do you feel about this? I'm excited. It's going to be my first uh, ring gapping experience here. All right. I see your path that you have. It's like a natural. I know. It's so intense. All right, that was that was seven like little ones. I, I don't want to get too far. <laughs> See, the gap is right there, guys. No, it needs more for sure. Tight still. Very tight still. I didn't rip it hard enough. But I really got to bog it a little harder. Yeah, you want to hear like how many do you think I should do here then? Five. Yeah, give it five. All right. Good ones. There we go. Last I feel one like was, that did. I feel like was that, that last one for good measures? Yeah, I just want to clean it, you know, give it a nice give little, a little, little polish. Push her down. We're all learning together here. It's all right. All right. And for it sliding like butter, you see that? Stick her in there. Look at that. Went all the way down. Look at that, like butter. All right, it's time lapse time. We're gonna knock this out. Alrighty, folks, so we had a great weekend and we're back in the shop. Pretty much everything is ready to roll. Once we finish up gapping the rings, we put the rings on the pistons, everything's laid out over here. Looks ready to rock and roll. James, you got things looking real organized over everything here. Everything is. Everything's yeah. numbered, organized, laid out where it's got to go on the motor. <laughs> the whole block is all cleaned up, ready to rock and roll. Got our pistons and rods over here. They're all cleaned up, but we're going to cover them in oil and lubricants before we put them in. I guess you're going to have to show me the process. And we got. The one little doohickey this thing this is pretty cool so piston goes in there and then you clamp down on the rings and tighten this up it tightens it real tight compresses yeah. the rings into the ring lens and then, then you just falls right into the cylinder bop it right in there yeah. okay so these are all numbered for which cylinder they have to go in we got to do it right and we're gonna get the party started i guess you lead it off here dot on the tops of the pistons go to the front of the motor so oh, okay it's, it's to get the rod that's good to right, know on the right angle see how this side's flat yep it's flat so when it's in this flat goes to flat, bell gotcha. edge goes to crank, gotcha. so oil can get in there. That sounds important. So yeah. dot forward, good That's to know. Step one. Step two <laughs> is you got to set your rings to where you don't want your ring gaps lined up. Like you don't want them like this because then, okay, you know we have that gap. Yes, yeah, so you oil offset them. To, oil can just go right up. Okay, so you got to offset them. Got to make sure you do that. Well, you usually just put them 180 of each other. Or just... Yeah, and then not up and down. You want them like side and side or like down here, up here kind of deal. Okay, makes sense. James put the oiling rings in too. And same thing, guys. You don't want the gaps lining up, even though those ones are very small. This is intense stuff, James. Hopefully we're doing this right. <laughs> and then we're pulling this hardware out because we have some new ARP yeah, right rod bolts. Yeah, there they are right there. Cool. All right, are you ready to do this or what? Really getting her lubed up there. Oh yeah, it's bad. Oh wow. Oh dang. Oh that's cool, it's got a little self-tightening deal. Yeah, it's got a, <clears throat> to keep it nice and tight. Okay. Okay, okay. So then you get it crushed on there. Gotta make sure it lines up with the crank, or do you just align so it on the crank? You just want to get the rings down in the cylinder first, okay. and then you can turn the piston when it's when it's in the cylinder. I mean, you got this dot for reference on the top of the piston, yeah. so you can keep it pretty straight. The trick All with right. this is you want to make sure the tool stays flat against the deck. Oh, oh damn! It fell off of there. She's in. That's a pretty cool tool right there. Like I've seen. Yeah, I like the adjustable one. Yeah, yeah, because normally you'll get one exactly. The, the size and the dude, if you build like 10 different motors, different ones, so. yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. Damn, all right, piston number two and cylinder number two. We got seven more to go, obviously. This is pretty freaking sweet. All right, so rings, I'm gonna set those opposite of each other. Right. So this way, you got it going to the front of the motor. Okay, so that dot goes to the front. Yep, rings are offset. 
Let me check the rings on the oiling ring. We're all good. None of the gaps were matching up. Perfect. So. And, and then on this bad girl. on that tool, you just push that lever, and it will release the. Okay. There you go. That's how you pick up all the boost. I guess. When you do stuff like that. Which side goes down? Does it uh, see this you want towards the bottom okay. because it's tighter. Yeah. All right. So piston is in. Give her a couple cranks, and then just keep this straight. good oh yeah do you feel like you're building a 1500 horsepower motor <laughs> do i feel like it i am building a 50 <laughs> i'm just saying does it feel do you, do you get that feeling i i think i am is the crank journal down it's yeah. up it's towards me there you go now it's down right. oh boy seems like james has thrown together a few junkyard motors in his day a few that's cool. all i that's all i run <laughs> all right and then keep you just want to keep this flat. Sometimes you got to give it a couple taps, like yeah. around the tool. Okay. I really don't know if he's qualified to do that. I'm definitely not qualified. I hope this. Is this not. is the only way you learn. This All hands right. on. If that ring gives you a little resistance, just hammer it through. Yeah. And just hammer the tool down, Jeremy. And a steady push. Peanut gallery is really getting you. Nope. <laughs> yep. Jeremy, shut up. Damn, I feel like I just nailed one of the rings. Yeah, yeah, stop no, pushing. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. Pull it back out and then just reset your tool. Son of a biscuit. You don't have to go all the way out. You just got to get the... You might be able to tap the tool down onto it. Okay, so I smoked one of the rings, but it's fine. Yeah, well, you didn't have a lot of force behind it, so it's okay. It just sounded bad. It sounded bad. But... Yeah, I see the key in getting the piston, like, actually level in this thing. Yeah. I didn't realize you could get it off level a little bit. Seems like it's definitely on, like, more line now. Yeah. Very steady on this one. Tap the tool down just so it, you know it's flat. All right, tool's flat. Here we go. Got the dot forward. Just give her a slight push. Come on. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So to give her a little love tap. She's in there. Woo. So it's a little bit crooked. The dot is. That's fine. Can we adjust that. Yeah, yeah. It can, we can turn the piston by the by, by the, the rod. rod. Okay. Yeah, Woo. to get it lined up. That was intense. All right, guys, we're gonna jump to a time lapse, knock this out, get all the pistons in, and then from there we gotta put the caps on. That should be interesting. Yeah. Well, alrighty folks, we got all the pistons in. We're about to rotate the engine over it. I made sure that I was clean, used a lot of lubricant, used some oil, used some WD-40. We're gonna rotate this puppy over and line everything up on the crank. Most of the rods are already pushed down to the crank, but some of it needs some lining up because I couldn't really get it to line up just reaching under there. James is putting the, uh, the ARPs in, the caps, and then uh, once it's all lined up, we're just rip those babies in and go for it or what? We'll torque them down and it's it's ready oh to my gosh uh, cam, oil pan cam timing, cam timing set, lifters heads and it's a motor again. ready to rip <laughs> also guys james finished up the rear bumper on the c6 and i have to say it looks absolutely amazing i love how you cut it out <laughs> yeah i figured it would be a good touch yeah. and then do it for ed and the, the full pull on the tail that's the only one that gets on the tail <laughs> just because i cut this and this little like guy that. what's an oil pull no one will know. Oh, pull, dude, this is sick. Livery on point. What you got, Adam LZ? What you got on that, brother? Woohoo! Check it out, guys. All the caps are on the rods with our new bolts. Everything looks good. We made sure we were really clean on the bearings and everything before we locked it down, made sure we had plenty of lubrication on there. So we gotta torque these down, put the windage tray on, the pan, keep on moving along. Oh yeah, Texas speed. Dumpster fire cam take two. 
Yes, sir. The sequel. The sequel. All right, let's do it. Get her nice and lubricated. Rip it in. I'll catch it on the other. Oh, there's a cover on the back. Yeah. You're going to have to finesse it. The ultimate cam finesser. You got this? Yo, no bolts in the front either? Dang. No. Who's this guy think he is? Got a peephole back here. <laughs> here she goes. Get ready for the finesse. Can he do it? We gotta do the rear main anyway, but. Uh, this. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Nicely done, James. No bolts, no nothing. Free hand in it. All right, cam is in. Timing time. We're getting this knocked out pretty quick. James, quit hitting stuff with the hay. Hey. All right, guys, Leroy's old, old heads are on. Looking beautiful out of the hot tank. They cleaned up pretty good. A little beat up, but they should be fine. We've got plenty of spring in them, I'm sure. So right now we're gonna put the washers on, then we gotta put the assembly lube on the top of the nuts, and then or the bottom, like right on the face, yeah, the and then over. put them on, torque down the head studs, and we're good to go. Just like that, this thing is ready to go in. Water pumps on. We found a balancer outside. I think it's off of Jeremy's Caprice. We got our freaking, we got the motor mounts on, oil filter, oil pan, valve covers even. James is rocking and rolling on this thing while I finished up the Dale Chuck racing video. Everyone's working hard here today. Cooper's in there getting the shirts out for you guys, the Sweet Honey Barbecue shirts. But now we're ready to drop this thing into Ruby. You can see we still have the steering rack out and everything like that. So the engine should slide right in, should be real easy. And then, uh, from there, just start it up and do a burnout. <laughs> Are you ready, James? Born ready. Here we go. Down she goes. <laughs> Coming in hot. All right, I'm gonna put down the camera to help you. We just got down and dirty, but we got this bad girl in. Look at how convenient this space is to stand. Cause we got body panels. We're not used to that. Yeah. Lira makes it a little easier, but we got it in. And uh, now we got to put the steering rack back in. We got to put the flywheel bolts on. Well, not the flywheel bolts, the flex plate. Flex plate bolts, connects. bell housing bolts. Yeah, bell housing intake. bolts. Intake, we got to put the manifolds on, turbo kit on. We got some serious work to do. We better get after it. All right, guys, so we have pretty much the accessory drive done. We've got manifolds on both sides. James and I were just talking about how simple this car is. It's kind of fun to work on. We're uh, we kind of really enjoy working on this car because it's such a, what would you say, less risk or yeah. just low pressure. pressure. Yeah. yeah, you know, because really at the end of the day, if this thing doesn't have oil pressure, we go back to the junkyard. It's a bunch of stock parts. It sucks, you know, time and a couple hundred bucks, but it's a totally different story with like this or Leroy, obviously. So we're having a lot of fun with this thing and we're getting close. So we're about to hang the intake right up on there. Hook that baby up, hook up all the fuel lines, hook up the injectors. You gotta put the steering rack back in, radiator, that good stuff. Put some water in it, put some oil in it, let it rip. All right guys, we're calling it a night. James has to go take care of his racer in training. I got some editing to do, but we will be back in the morning. Good morning, Holly. Mm. Oh yeah, that's oh. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Holly. She's ready to do turbo stuff today. Are you ready to do turbo stuff today? I'm ready to do hood rat stuff too. <laughs> All right, so James and I got here nice and early. We got old spaghetti here too. We got the, uh, got like the turbo crossover pipe on. Uh, James got the steering rack back in. Everything's pretty much wrapped up. We're about to dry fire this thing. No turb ski. We gotta put oil in it and then we'll do the radiator after that, but gotta make sure the engine actually works. So we're actually gonna open up the turbo box right now. Ooh. We got our turbo back from Precision and it's a little bit different now because uh, the other one got a little bit tore up. That's to be expected when you let it rip tater chip. All right, so guys, on this turbo, our old one, because you guys saw in the video how the turbine wheel stopped right when the motor blew up. 
It's because it had a bunch of junk in it. Guys, Precision said, had we ran it after this and tried to use the turbo, would have completely destroyed itself right away. But the guys called me while the turbo was in for service and they were like, hey, we can put this thing back together with a ball bearing center section. And I was like, hell yeah, brother. So basically this turbo just went from like an 800 horsepower turbo to a thousand horsepower turbo. Which and a billet wheel, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's got, oh yeah, and it had a cast wheel, now it has a billet wheel, so. A billet wheel and ball bearings. Yeah, I think we can all agree this is a nice upgrade. Now it's like Leroy's turbos. Pretty much, yeah, it's pretty much a Gen 2 now. So this is a 76, 75 LS series turbo. Well, it was originally, but now it's kind of a, I guess you could say, cheated up. See the billet wheel? Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. It just took off. Look at shit. Yeah. James like, that just took off on you. Dude, so, I mean, with the journal bearing, you know, you'd spin it and it would just do like maybe one lap. Look at that now. Yeah, that's really Whoop. nice. Hell yeah. Looks so weird spinning through a lens. But uh, thanks to Precision for getting this back quickly and giving us those few little upgrades. So we're going to dry fire the car with no turbo. Make sure anything that was in the exhaust, you know, broken piss and pieces still. We tried to clean them. But stuff might fly out, then we'll put the turbo on. And that'll help clean out the, uh, the feed line if there's anything left in that, but we clean that too. And then uh, put the turbo on, throw it on the dyno, go to the track. James, I found a set of Leroy's old spark plugs from last race season. Look great. They look great. Pre-gap too, it only got a gap on. Pre-gap right out of the box. <laughs> Alrighty guys, we are ready to rock and roll. Plugs are in, coil packs are on, power steering's done, oil's in. We just don't have water in it. We don't have the turbo on, obviously, but we're going to dry fire it. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, I'll give you a power. So it's going to have a major vacuum leak going on, but it'll start high idle for a second and then just kick it off, check the oil pressure. That's pretty much it. Go ahead. Is it? We guessed on the steering wheel. We were hoping it was straight. Nothing? Oh, battery. Oh yeah, hit it. Oh, oh. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. Woo! Got oil pressure? Yeah, I saw there's oil in the in the like court. 65 psi. Woo! All right. Uh, let's run it for just a hair longer. RPM, it's got 70 PSI. <laughs> 70 pounds of oil pressure. Woo! Whole bunch of crap flew out the exhaust yeah, when it fired up. <laughs> Damn, dude, that's the first engine I've ever helped assemble. Hell yeah. I heard it fire. That's oil pressure, Coop. <laughs> That's a good sign. Oh man. All right, guys. Ruby is reborn with her new junkyard motor. Hopefully this one lasts a little bit longer, but we have a lot of work to do and we're going to cut you off there. So stay tuned for next video. Thanks for watching. Do it for Dale. We will freaking see you later.